hello students today we will be discussing the effect of solutes water activity and some other factors on microbial growth and distribution last class we saw the effect of oxygen and now we come to the effect of solutes water activity first now as we know microorganisms have a selectively permeable plasma membrane separating them from their environment what does the term selectively permeable mean it means the plasma membrane allows certain substances to pass through it and blocks certain other substances so changes in the osmotic concentration in the level of solutes in the level of water of the surroundings we mainly mean liquid environments here any change in the level of solutes or the water in the liquid environment where the microorganism is growing that change can affect the growth of this microorganisms based on the amount of solutes and water we have mainly two different kinds of solutions hypotonic solution and hypertonic solutions hypotonic solution is one which has less solutes and more water if a cell is placed in such a solution water will enter the cell because water is of more concentration outside the cell than the inside so water will enter the cell and the cell can burst in a hypertonic environment which has more solutes less water water will leave from the cell where it is present in higher concentration than the environment water will leave the cell into the environment this can cause dehydration of the cell plasma membrane will shrink away from the cell wall plasmolysis will occur due to dehydration this picture clearly explains it on the left we can see a hypertonic solution where the cell is placed the cell has lost its original shape it has become shrunken or shriveled because water is moving out of the cell into the environment in a hypertonic environment as we discussed water is less solutes are more in the cell water is more solutes are less compared to the environment so water will move out of the cell on the right hand side we can see hypotonic solution where cell is placed hypotonic solution will have less of solutes more of water and the cell in comparison has less of water more of solutes in comparison to the environment that environment so water will move into the cell causing the cell to expand and finally burst so to grow in such environments microorganisms have certain adaptations what are they in hypotonic solutions where solute is less in the environment and more in the cell water is more in the environment less in the cell so there is a tendency of water to enter the cells to prevent this prokaryotes or bacteria have some mechanisms what are they first one they have inclusion bodies we already know what are inclusion bodies they store some kinds of substances particular solutes thus remove them from the cytoplasm and maintain the osmolarity of the cytoplasm or lower the amount of solutes in the cytoplasm because they are stored away in certain inclusion bodies they are not present freely available in cytoplasm this maintains their concentration in a lower level so inclusion bodies store away particular solutes that is the first mechanism second one there are pressure sensitive channels through which solutes can leave the cell solutes leave the cell thus maintaining its concentration inside the cell at a lower level and then there are rigid cell walls in most bacteria algae and fungi these cell walls maintain the shape and integrity of the cell so bacteria have inclusion bodies pressure sensitive channels and rigid cell walls to maintain their shape structure in the hypotonic environment now protozoa lack cell wall so 
they have some other mechanism contractile vacuoles which eliminate excess water when living in hypertonic environment so contractile vacuoles keep on removing excess water which enter the cell so this was in case of hypotonic environments either the bacteria remove the solutes keep them in inclusion bodies thus maintaining their level at a lower level in the cytoplasm or they have pressure sensitive channels through which solutes can leave the cell or they have rigid cell walls to protect the cells maintain their shape and rigidity protozoa have contractile vacuoles to eliminate excess water entering the cell now in a hypertonic environment what happens in a hypertonic environment solute is more water is less in the environment in comparison in the inside the microorganism solute is less and water is more so the tendency is for the water to leave the cell into the environment so this causes plasma membrane to shrink dehydration of the cell occurs finally leading to its death or growth stops so to retain water microorganisms need some mechanisms what are they first one is they have certain solutes called compatible solutes which retain water and keep it binded inside the cell so the osmotic concentration becomes higher and almost equal to that of the environment so water water will not then leave the cell osmolarity is maintained plasma membrane is always pressed firmly against the cell wall so compatible solutes they retain water inside the cell the amount of solute is now higher inside the cell also and almost similar or higher than that of the environment so there is no chance of water leaving from the cell to the environment now what are these compatible solutes as the term suggests compatible means they are compatible with the metabolism and growth of the cell they do not interfere with or they do not stop the metabolism and growth even if they are present at high intracellular concentrations usually some substances can interfere with growth if present above normal levels but these compatible solutes do not interfere with the metabolism or growth some common examples are choline betaine proline glutamic acid and other amino acids sometimes elevated levels of potassium ions ions also do this now algae and fungi retain sucrose and polyalcohols or polyols like arabitol glycerol and mannitol polyols and amino acids are ideal because they are normal components of the cell and they do not interfere with enzyme structure or function so these were compatible solutes which are retained by microorganisms when they grow in hypertonic environment so their their level is also high inside the cell now there is no chance of water to leave the cell so this was hypertonic and hypertonic solutions and how microorganisms survive in these solutions that was about the solute part now in connection to same concept we have water activity water activity is the amount of water available for microorganisms in a particular environment available for their use for their growth and metabolism just now we saw if what solutes are present more in an environment they bind water and they make it non available so water activity is reduced in presence of more solutes solutions with high osmotic pressure has low water activity so if microorganism is placed in an environment which has more solutes solutes will be binding with the water microorganism will not have the water to use in such environments microorganisms cannot grow now water activity can be determined by or determined as the ratio of the solutions vapor pressure to that of pure water so water activity aw is equal to p solution by p water 
മൈക്രോഗാൻസംസ് ഡിഫർ ഇൻ ദർ എബിലിറ്റി ടു അഡാപ്റ്റ് ടു ഹാബിറ്റാറ്റ്സ് വിത്ത് ലോ വാട്ടർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി സോ ഇഫ് പ്ലേസ് ഇൻ എൻവയോൺമെൻറ്റ് വിച്ച് ഡസ് നോട്ട് ഹാവ് ഫ്രീ വാട്ടർ അവൈലബിൾ ഫോർ ദർ ഗ്രോത്ത് ദേ കെ നോട്ട് ഗ്രോ ഇൻ ദറ്റ് എൻവയോൺമെൻറ്റ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ബേസിസ് ബിഹൈൻഡ് ഡ്രൈയിങ് ഫുഡ് ഓർ ആഡിങ് ലാർജ് ക്വാണ്ടിറ്റീസ് ഓഫ് സോൾട്ട് ആൻഡ് ഷുഗർ വിച്ച് പ്രിവെൻസ് ദ ഫുഡ് സ്പോയിലേജ് So, food preservation by jams, by making jams, pickles, jellies, they all have high concentration of solutes which will bind the water available in the environment. Microorganisms cannot grow, so they, they cannot cause food spoilage. Also, drying of a food particle removes the moisture present. Water available is less now. Microorganisms cannot cause spoilage. So, this is the mechanism. of food preservation using drying food or by pickling making jams jellies etc most microorganisms require water activities around 0.98 or higher lower than that they find it difficult to grow in a habitat with low water activity what happens actually in a habitat with low water activity water available is less so if a microorganism is placed in such a habitat water will move from their cell to the environment and they should expend or spend more energy to retain that water and it becomes difficult to grow in such an environment first of all they don't have water available and above that whatever water is there in the cell that also goes to the environment so growth is difficult hence microorganisms usually do not grow in environments with high amounts of salt sugar or where water is not present so addition of salts increase increases the osmotic pressure thus can be used to preserve foods salted fish honey sweetened condensed milk are some examples of food preservation again high salt or sugar concentrations draw water out of microbial cells and prevent their growth i hope the concept is clear but there are some microorganisms which can grow over wide ranges of water activity or osmotic concentration they are called osmotolerant only few microorganisms are osmotolerant fungi are usually osmotolerant that is why they are the main culprits causing spoilage of salted or dried foods we know in our pickles and all if at all we get contamination it is usually by fungi dried foods also some microorganisms other than fungi which are osmotolerant examples saccharomyces rauxi can grow in sugar solutions with water activity values as low as 0.6 usually they require around 0.98 we told microorganism rauc saccharomyces rauxi can grow if the value is as low as 0.6 staphylococcus aureus can grow in media containing sodium chloride concentration up to 3 molar that is high salt concentration the algae dunaliella viridis can tolerates high sodium chloride concentration from 1.7 molar to a saturated higher values so what we saw now osmo tolerant the term means able to grow over wide ranges of water activity or osmotic concentration example staphylococcus aureus saccharomyces rauxi now in connection with this we have another term halophile halophiles are microorganisms which love high salt concentrations require high levels of sodium chloride it can even be potassium chloride salt need not always mean sodium it can be potassium also usually above about 0.2 molar to grow a common example is halobacterium so halophile salt loving microorganisms example halobacterium halophiles require high levels of salt to grow 2.8 molar to 6.2 molar a common example is an archaeobacterium halobacterium it is isolated from the dead sea dead sea has the highest salt content in the world also in the great salt lake in utta other aquatic habitats with high salt concentrations we can see halobacterium in all these environments now extremely halophilic bacteria such as halo bacterium has increased intracellular concentrations of solutes either sodium or potassium they have modified the structure of their proteins and membranes enzymes ribosomes transport proteins 
all require high levels of sodium or potassium for stability and activity even the plasma membrane and cell wall are stabilized by high concentrations of sodium or potassium ion they disintegrate if the salt concentration decreases so these extremely halophilic bacteria first of all they have increased intracellular concentrations of these salts sodium or potassium in the body that second they have modified the structure of their proteins or membranes enzymes ribosomes transport proteins everything require high levels of salt for stability and activity even the plasma membrane cell wall are all stabilized by high concentrations of sodium ion sodium or potassium ion they disintegrate if the concentration decreases so ultimately what happens extreme halophilic bacteria they have become so specialized that they can grow only if high solute concentration is present in the environment only in certain extreme habitats they can grow so they have lost their ecological flexibility they cannot grow everywhere they have successfully adapted to environmental conditions which will destroy most other organisms so if we have to culture them in our lab we have to add salt to their media for them to grow otherwise they will not grow they have lost their flexibility to grow in normal environments so that was about solutes and water activity now another factor which is important for the growth of microorganisms we'll be just seeing the basic things first one is pressure pressure we know most organisms live on land like us or on the surface of water even microorganisms and they are exposed to a pressure of one atmosphere or one atmos but there are microorganisms inhabiting deep sea deep sea means ocean of 1000 meter or more in depth below the sea surface and deep sea constitutes about 75% of total ocean volume their hydrostatic pressure can reach up to 600 to 1100 atmos temperature can be around 2 to 3 degree celsius and in such environments most organisms do not survive but bacteria survive and adapt to that conditions also the bacteria living there they are classified as or into two groups first one is baro tolerant and second one is barophilic as the name suggests baro tolerant are the organisms which can tolerate increased pressure they can also be harmed by this pressure but they can survive that to an extent unlike the non tolerant bacteria some bacteria will get killed by the pressure but this organisms can survive those pressure for some time or in some conditions maybe so they are baro tolerant barophilic the word philic means loving so they love high pressure these organisms grow more rapidly at high pressures and these are commonly seen in the gut or intestine of deep sea invertebrates they help in nutrient recycling in the deep sea common examples are photobacterium shevanella colvelia colvelia etc some members of archae archae bacteria seen in the deep sea are actually thermobarophiles they love extreme temperature and extreme pressure example pyrococcus species methanococcus species so this was about the pressure usually most microorganisms and most organisms are exposed to one atmos on the surface of water or on land some organisms which inhabit the deep sea they are exposed to pressures of 600 1100 temperature 2 to 3 degree celsius or even extremes high temperatures so bacteria can survive and adapt in such conditions also they fall mainly into baro tolerant and barophilic groups baro tolerant tolerate the pressure barophilic love extreme pressure they grow more rapidly in such conditions common examples photobacterium shevanella some thermobarophiles which require extremes of temperature and pressure they are pyrococcus methanococcus next one is radiation we are all exposed to radiation electromagnetic radiation they can be harmful to microorganisms mainly there are there are ionizing radiations and non ionizing radiations ionizing radiations are of important they have short wavelength 
and high energy and it can cause atoms to ionize loose electrons and ionize two common ionizing radiations are x rays which are artificially produced gamma rays which are emitted during radio isotope decay so ionizing radiations affect the growth of microorganisms low levels can produce mutations can indirectly result in death high levels can be directly lethal to the organisms compared to larger organisms microorganisms are more resistant to ionizing radiation but they can be destroyed by large doses of ionizing radiation so ionizing radiation x ray gamma ray can be used to sterilize items or surgical instruments all that can be sterilized using x rays gamma rays etc there are some microorganisms resistant ones to the radiation common example is deinococcus radiodurans that can resist ionizing radiation can survive in presence of radiation and bacterial endospores also endospores as we know are resistant structures to adverse environmental conditions so they can also resist radiation so radiation ionizing radiations can kill microorganisms compared to larger organisms microorganisms are more resistant to ionizing radiation ionizing radiations are mainly of two kinds x rays gamma rays since microorganisms can be killed by large doses of these radiations they can be used to sterilize different materials there are resistant microorganisms which can survive large doses of radiations also common example are bacteria deinococcus radiodurans and some endospores bacterial endospores not some so this was about the effect of solutes water activity pressure and radiation on the growth and distribution of microorganisms hopefully it is clear to you any doubts do get back and thank you